how's it going? Um, today, what I wanted to share with you, plant people, is I guess it's sort of an ongoing project that I've been doing for a long time, but I'm at a kind of cool um, point in it right now. And that is um, kind of trying to figure out good house plants that are also edible and or medicinal. Um, I mean, it's oddly enough, it doesn't seem to be something I've seen anybody really talk about very much. Like you'll see like how to, how to grow whatever plant indoors, but what I'm talking about is like, what, what are some plants that are really well suited to be kept as house plants that you, you could also use? Um, and so I, I did this a little bit in Austin, but um, these are my plants that I, I've got seven plants that I'm gonna show you today. And um, you know, kind of some stuff to say about um, house plant care uh, as we go. So let's see, I'm gonna do them in alphabetical order by scientific name, of course. The first one, oh, okay, so the first one is a maidenhair fern. Um, they are just phenomenally pretty plants, aren't they? Um, and this one, I, I really, I love this plant because it reminds me so much of Austin. There are these, um, there's a, okay, there's a geologic feature that happens in Texas and Mexico, I don't know where else, um, where, where basically there are big bubbles in the limestone back when it was still liquidy. And so uh, then sometimes these, you know, huge um, limestone bubble domes would cave in and you end up with this circular well or circular shaft and uh, it's called a cenote and there are two right outside of Austin where um, it's such that it, that there's the you know circular hole and then waterfall in and then a creek and they're just really beautiful spots one is called Hamilton pool and the other one is called West Cave Preserve both just gorgeous spots and these grow like just along these um, rock faces um, with sort of dappled sunlight and continuous water coming through. And um, so I guess it's a, a good, uh, just basic point about any kind of plant that you keep. It doesn't matter if it's in a pot or as a house plant or balcony or in your garden. It, you know, if, if you can visualize where it lives when it's being wild, then you have a good idea of what its needs are gonna be. So this plant I've had for a while, um, just like they do in nature, as a house plant, when when it dries out, it'll all these uh, will die back. I left I left this one on just to show you that that's that's um, if it dried completely out, it would go entirely brown. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this one off after uh, after making this video, but um, I left it on for now. And I hope you can also see that it's making spores right now. Now I don't think you're gonna be able to see. Oh yeah, yeah, right at the e ends of the. Um, the leaves, there's these little dots. Those are the spores that ferns make. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, so this one has like died back and come back a few times, but you can see that uh, I've been good about keeping it moist for a while now. So it's got a lot of leaves and it's got these new, new babies coming. So um, I haven't used it a whole lot. I, I harvested it while a little bit in, in Central Texas. Um, very important point about um, gathering that if you if you gather this plant, um, you don't if you, if you pull on these, they're very strong and it'll actually it'll pull the root off of the rock that it's stuck to before it'll actually give you a leaf. So you really have to clip this. You can't don't don't try to harvest this by pulling or you're going to damage the plant. Um, it has. Uh, vanillin in it has that the vanilla um, scent uh, and so uh, yellow clover has this as well and so does um, sweet woodruff and just like with those it, it, it doesn't smell that way now it's after you dry it and then it has that vanillin smell and um, it's also a, a blood thinner it has medicinal uses anyway um, but it's really also nice in a blend to give a vanilla flavor so um, yeah, so medicinal tea herb that's also a nice reminder of Austin. So uh, 
oh yeah, and it's um, Adiantum capillus veneris, which means, uh, uh, capillus veneris means the hair of Venus, so maiden hair fern. Uh, and, oh, and the other thing is it grows on, um, one more thing, it grows on limestone, so even though, um, so the water in Berlin is very, very hard, it has um, a lot of minerals, very alkaline, uh, so that, because of that, you get this um, white stuff. Some plants hate that, but they don't worry about it that much with this guy because um, they grow on limestone anyway. It doesn't, it's not bothered by alkalinity. So that's cool. Those made hair. The next one, this one is exciting. Okay, um, so I guess the rest of them, yes. The other six I, I ordered this year from, there's a nursery in Germany called uh, Lulemans, and they specialize in aromatic and um, er, uh, um, herb plants, but you know, mostly garden plants, outdoor plants. Um, so I went through their catalog and basically ordered everything that seemed like it might work as a house plant for me here that's, that's also, you know, edible and so forth. So this one's cool. It's um, called Sisu spinach. I had never heard of it before. It's dripping a little. I watered it recently. Um, it is in the amaranth family. It's a perennial. They're all perennials. And um, so I've read about it a little bit and it says that it is a ground cover. And so, and it, that it's going to have, it's going to stay low and grow sideways. So um, all the pots I have currently have that sort of, you know, classic flower pot shape. Um, but I don't want to go bigger because I think it's going to be kind of superficial. So I want to get a pot that's uh, shallow and, and wide for this guy and see if I can get it to sort of um, come out sideways. It's tasty. I like this one. This is one where I, um, you just eat a leaf of it and like, oh, good, nice salad. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm excited about this one. It is getting, um, this is, since I got it, it's getting this uh, tip burn. That is, I, I'm going to assume um, probably happening because the water is too alkaline. I put a drop of vinegar in it, but it looks like this one's going to not like the alkaline water. So I'll have to, you know, either repot it frequently and get the, the scale out, use some vinegar. I might, I don't know if I'm going to have to go to uh, distilled vinegar, uh, distilled water or something. So that's that guy. Uh, amaranth, I said that. I'll, I'll take. Alternifera sisu. Isn't that a cool scientific name? Sisu is the common name, I guess, in Brazil. Okay, this one. I'm really excited about this one. Um, this came labeled just as a on, Onradera species, but I'm pretty sure it's Cordifolia. Um, I put it, so I, I put it, and it's dripping. Uh, I put it in this pot that's, um, you know, wire basket because, let's see, because it had some things coming on the side of it and I thought maybe I can get it to um, come through um, because it's basically like this weird woody root that seems to send shoots in all directions. Um, I read a little bit about it and I guess it's a terrible weed in Australia and uh, that kind of gives me some clues about what kind of plant it is and, and sure enough, it looks like um, like so many serious weedy plants, it can die all the way back to the root and come back. Um, and it's like, it looks, I, I left this stuff on just so I could show you. It looks like it has a really strong tendency to just like give up on, on uh, pieces. Um, and then, and it's just sprouting like crazy new growth. I mean, it grows really fast. So I can see how it would be weedy. It seems to love water. And then um, I read, somebody said they, just as an experiment, they, um, they had one, they didn't water it for a year and it came right back. And um, I had assumed, I was really thinking that these were completely dead and not worth saving. And now I see, oh, there's little green, fresh growth. Wow, it's an intense plant and it's tasty. So that's cool. This will be nice to, um, this looks like this will be a good one. I, it, 
we'll see how things go when the when there's less light because um, I, I think I might actually set up a little bit of a grow light situation this year just because I, you know it won't be traveling I'll be home a lot so I might as well go a little crazy with the indoor plants let's see did I say oh yeah it's in a uh, family called Basilaceae, which I'd never heard of before, but I guess um, I've actually had another plant in this family, which is that um, Malabar spinach, which is kind of similar, but it's a, a different genus in the same family. I bet this would grow from cuttings too. Anyway, so that's a cool one. I'm very excited about that because both of those two taste good. I got another, I've, you know, I've tried with these a few times. Um, I got another Thai lime, kind of classic, pretty familiar. Um, the thing I wanted to mention about this, I, I'm just going to kind of assume everybody knows this, uh, Cistrus hist Hystrix, which I think is a really cool name, Rutaceae family, Citrus is the Rutaceae family, and, and so, yeah, so it's a citrus, but it has this really distinct leaf form that's like got the two, two parts, see, and it has these vicious dangerous plant um, you know fantastic smell good for Thai soups and um, here's the thing I, so last time I got one of these it also had three um, I thought three little trees I thought oh three seeds three trees and I took out two of them to try to let the big one dominate and that one didn't do well after that and now I'm wondering and I almost want to like dig in and investigate if it actually is one seed with three stalks and in that case um, I'm I don't know I'm still thinking about how to go about pruning this right because uh, so in general you want to take out things that are crossing and you know and that are blocking light um, and so if I decide to keep all three of these leaders, then I want to uh, take out the crossing branches. But then if, I, but if, if it turns out, no, I'm only leaving that one, I don't want to have taken that out. So I'm, I'm still contemplating what to, how to harp. So I really like sort of simultaneous pruning harvesting, right? So like I'm thinking about like, what's the, um, mm, What's my long-term strategy on how to prune this and then that's how I will harvest. I will, I'll be using that plan in my head as I harvest, but I'm still working on the strategy. Tie line. Rutasia. Okay, the next one is Jiao Gulan, which I have grown before. It is very, very pretty. I'm just saying it's a it's just a nice, it's a plant you, you know, people plant it just as a decorative trailing plant in a balcony box. And I think I might do that. I think I might just put it in my balcony box and let it trail because um, it's really pretty. So it's in the, I believe it's called what? Gymnostema pentathyllum five leaf. Um, it's in the cucurbitaceae, which is the cucumber family. So it's like, it's like basically a bitter cucumber vine. Um, and it's sometimes called the poor man's ginseng because it's got um, a lot, some of the same compounds. And so it's a, an adaptogen, you know, so that's awesome, except for I cannot deal with how it tastes. It is, um, it is saccharine. It ha it's like sweet, but in a way that I find really unpleasant. And I know that it's um, kind of, yeah, I mean, people use other sweet plants as well and they like it. I, I don't, I just don't. And I know I kind of don't know what to do. I've, um, it's something where I would like to be eating a few leaves of this every day. I think it would be good for my health, but I just stopped doing it because I don't like the flavor. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and so, um, I've got to figure out what to do. I mean, like I saw somebody had like a recipe for a smoothie. I thought, I don't want to eat like two cups of fruit just in order to get a few leaves of this in. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm working on how to actually consume this. Um, and it's, 
it's it, like a cucumber. It loves water, it grows quickly, but it, it can, you know, should dry out in between. It's not a water plant. Um, so that's that, friend. And I haven't decided, am I going to just put it out in the balcony and harvest it at the end of the season, or am I going to try to over overwinter it? Um, I guess it, it's, it's a short-lived perennial, so I might get it through the winter, but I, it's also really easy to find. I haven't decided. I'm not sure on that. The next one. The next two are both water plants, which is cool. So I've basically got, you know, and also I've got that uh, maidenhair fern. So I'm going to set up a, um, I don't know, maybe I'll do like a little indoor fountain or something. Um, so the next one is go to cola. And this one is, um, let's see, Hydrocotyl asiatica. Um, it is in the Apiaceae, the carrot family, which seems weird, right? This does not, I wouldn't glance at this and think this is a carrot. Um, this one right now happens to be blooming. You see these, uh, yeah, there they are. The cute little fuckers as well. Cool, right? I'm just going to go a little more over here. And there. Yeah, maybe not perfectly. Anyway, it is a water plant it starts to do this as soon as it get it on gets dry brown leaf and um, but it's one of these plants that's just it's a trooper I, I mean I would say this is like a week's growth right here I mean it's so fast and um, the older leaves are quite bitter to my taste the younger leaves taste better but then you always kind of feel like oh I want to I'll let them grow. I, I don't know. Um, I have just received a from Kay a recipe of, about how to make a salad that she says tastes good. So I'm gonna try making a salad from it. I mean, ideally, I'd be wanting to eat like two or three leaves a day um, every day because it's a it's considered a brain herb, and but that a lot of that is from circulation. It supports uh, the blood vessels also. So it's a kind of thing that's good to have. Um, you just as a, as a tonic, as a daily food. Um, so, you know, good friend, nice to have her. It's such a pretty leaf, such a, you know, it's just such a friendly, nice, you know, houseplant. This one, also a water plant, and I just think it's so cute, is called Sushni. Its scientific name is Marsilea minuta, and it's in the Marsilaceae family of ferns. It's actually a fern. Cool, right? Yeah. Oh, you can see right here this, uh, it, the new growth is those little fuzzy things like a lot of ferns get. Um, yeah, all the growing tips are furry. And, um, and it's one of these very cute ones that closes up its leaves. It's always so cute. Um, cause, so here is a closed one, but when they're open, they have this sort of, uh, they look like shamrocks and um so what's really cool is and, and i've you know eaten a leaf oh and they have such a cool pattern in the way. anyway um i've eaten a few bites of it it's fine oh am i wait now i'm thinking am i remembering it correctly yeah it's like it's a leaf not particularly strongly flavored um I hope I didn't take that too early in the day. What I've read is that it um, helps you fall asleep and that it is um, anti-convulsant for uh, people with epilepsy. That was interesting. Um, but it's considered one of the, uh, you know, it's a, it's another one of these tonic herbs like the go-to cola and the um, jugulin and so forth. And I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm probably most excited about this one. It's tastes good. It's a little bit weird. It's cute. It's a water plant. Um, this happened. This brownness happened before I realized it was a water plant. Oops. But so I figured I will. Um, I'll clean that up. So I guess for these, I haven't decided um, exactly what my long-term setup is going to be for these three water plants, especially over the winter. But um, but that'll be fun, right? So that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed this and I 
Sip. Have a good day. Take care.